a warm welcome for everyone to the session number 14 in the part of react learning series this is continuation to our session number 13 in which we had discussed about building forms in react we all know how important it is to do the validation of the entered data before we do any operations on that data in this session we will understand how to validate forms data in react let's open index.js file from our demo project and this is what we had developed in our last session we have created a form and the form has total four inputs id name location and salary we will add one more input element using which we can enter employee email id in order to do that let us go to our use formic function and to this initial values object let us add one more property called as email id and initialize it to empty and within our form let us add one more input element where we can enter email id i copy the salary input element and i do the changes accordingly so that we can enter email id now we have placed another input element using which we can enter email id now to this form we have to add validations from this form's input data let's say we want to add validations for employee name employee location and employee email id so let us go ahead and decide our validation rules first we want to do validation for employee name so for employee name we want to add two types of validations one is required field validation another one is max length validation let's say we want to keep the restriction that employee name should not exceed 20 characters next we want to do validation for employee location and for employee location we will do required field validation and then comes employee email id and to this email id we want to add two kinds of validations one is required field validation another one is regular expression validation where we validate the format of the email id which is entered now let's start writing the code for doing the validation let us switch back to visual studio code let us go ahead and create a function called as validate employee so we say const validate employee and this function will receive the employee data so we say emp data goes to so this function should validate the employee data and return the error messages if any errors are there so let us go ahead and create an object using which we will return the error messages so we name it as errors let us check if employee name is having the data or not if employee name do not have the data let us set a new property to our errors object and let's name the property as name and write the error message here so we say please enter employee name if employee name is entered we have to check for another validation that is max length validation so we will go and write another if condition if emp data dot name dot length is greater than 20 then to the same name property we will set another error message so we write errors dot name is equals to employee name should not exceed 20 characters i have replicated the same for employee location and now we have to do the validation of employee email id for email id we have to do two kinds of validations one is required field validation another one is regular expression validation i have the code handy and i am pasting it here as one can see here we are doing required field validation and once the required field validation is completed we are doing the regular expression validation so here is the pattern using which we can check whether the email id is valid or not so with this we are done with doing the validation of name location and salary and from this function we will return this error as object now let's go to our use formic function here we will have another property called as validate and to this validate we will pass the function what we have created called as validate employee with this we are done with writing the code required for doing the validation now the next important thing is displaying those error messages to the user so that we are communicating back to the user about the mistakes what he is doing while filling the form now let's go ahead and write the code required to display these error messages so let's go back to our form so we are not doing any validation for employee id so we are doing the validation for employee name so next to this input we have to check here if the errors object is having any error for this name property or not if it has the error then we have to display that error but most important thing is we should display the error only when user touches that input field and when he takes the focus out of this text box we will display that error message to the user the formic object has a property called as touch dot name this returns true or false based on whether user has visited that field or not right if user has visited this field and if errors are there for this name property 
so we access the errors object using formic dot errors dot name we write a ternary operator so question mark then we want to display the error message so let us add a span tag and we want to apply a style so we say color red is what we want to use for displaying the error formic dot errors dot name is the property if name is not having any errors so we set it as null if this input is touched and if this input has errors then we are displaying those errors else we are displaying null most importantly we wanted that validation to be enabled when user does a tab out of this element so we set that by using on blur is equals to the formic object has another property called as handle blur so with this the validation happens when we do a tab out on this input element and now we repeat the same for employee location and employee email id we have done the required changes for employee location as well as for employee email id now let us save these changes let us navigate to the browser let's go ahead and enter some data into these fields now i enter prasim now let's go back to employee name take out these details and now you can see it says please enter employee name now the moment i enter it goes off so we say prasim tech and we can see it says a message that employee name should not exceed 20 characters now let us enter employee email id at the moment you do a tab out it says invalid email address now let us go back and enter a valid email id and then it goes off if you observe here so first time we are enabling the validation when we do a tab out on that input by using on blur by now we have seen how to write the validation code for our form inputs but we are free to use any third party validation library available and do the form validation formix others are a large portion of its users use app library for object schema validation now let's see how can we use app library for doing our forms validation in order to do that we have to install app library into our project so let us go to node js command prompt let's stop the current project execution now we use a command called as npm install app double hyphen save this will install this library into our project now the installation is completed successfully so let us run our project using npm start command so let us switch back to visual studio code now let's go ahead and delete all the validation code what we have written so this validate employee function whatever we have created which is doing the validation right now let's delete this let's import all the exported ones from app library and we are aliasing it as yep now let's go to use formic function and here let us delete the validate property what we had set earlier add a new property called as validation schema and to this we will pass object function available from our app library and to this object function we have to pass an object which contain the validation rules first let us do the validation for name so we say name and we have to specify the data type app dot string is the data type followed by adding the validations for max length so we have a function called as max and we specify the number so we say 20 and to this we'll pass the error message so we say name should not exceed 20 characters and on this we will add required validation as well so we say required and we have to pass the error message as well and we will add the rest of the validations using which we can validate employee location as well as employee email id so i have the code handy and i'm pasting it here as we can see here i have added the code required for doing the validation of location and as well as email id for email id i have added two different kinds of validations one is for doing the email validation another one is doing the required field validation let us save these changes let us navigate to the browser we can see that the validation is happening for our form data as we enter the values as we can see here we are doing the validation using a library called as app library if we see our input elements let it be id name location salary or email id if we observe closely we are writing so much of code to set values for different attributes like id on change value on blur and we are repeating this for all of our input elements to save us some time and to make our code better use formic function returns one helper method called as get field properties using which we can reduce this code drastically let's go ahead and modify our input elements to make use of it so first let us go to employee id 
so i removed all this code we will write name is equals to id and next we use spread operator three dots formic dot get field properties and to this we have to pass our input name so we say id and we repeat the same for rest of the input elements as well and see how better our code is now whatever the code we have written earlier to apply different attributes like on change value on blur all those things has been simplified and now we are just calling a method called as get field properties which will generate the same equivalent code let us save these changes let us navigate to the browser we can enter the data as one can see the validation remains same that means whatever the attributes what we have applied earlier now the same attributes are there in place it is just that the code is simplified by using a method called as get field properties with this we have understood how to do the form validation and how to display those error messages to the user thank you for watching this video and have a great day